Hello everyone. Today we will continue our discussions on oblique and expansion shockwave. So today handout will complete the oblique and expansion shockwave uh, teaching theory. So far we already discussed about the oblique uh, shockwaves. So in the last two meetings uh, we discussed about the oblique shockwave phenomenon across a shock which also include a detached shockwave for example in the last meeting so today we will focus more on the expansion shockwave in our first meeting of uh, oblique shockwave or we already uh, make a brief introductions with this uh, shockwave across a convex corner or we have a sharp angle here and a deflection angle of theta before we discuss about the oblique shock wave where the angle was concave instead of convex and now we put our focus on the convex corner so instead of having a single shock wave like the one in the concave corner here we have a set of wave or we call it expansion fan so we have a series of shock waves here and as normal we have a flow in upstream region and we have flow at downstream region so the difference is at these uh, sections we will deal with several shock waves arise due to an expansion corner of an angle of theta here or a deflection angle of theta Previously, on the oblique shock wave, we normally only deal with uh, one Mach angle. Since at this uh, expansion wave, we will deal with sets of shock waves. And let's take this simple example here. We take one shock wave at the very front and one shock wave at the very end of this expansion fan the first one creates an angle of mu1 it's an angle of the Mach waves with respect to the upstream flow so it it is uh, according to the flow stream at the upstream region and we have the second Mach angle or mu2 mu2 is uh, normally called as the rear word Mach line it's the angle between the rearward Mach line with the flow downstream since we know that after passing the shock wave the flow will be deflected and it will be parallel to the geometry downstream here so it's perpendicular here and it's called as the Mach angle at the region 2 or mu 2 and it's a with respect to the downstream flow region and the magnitude of each angle can be found by using an arc scene of 1 per my angle 1 for mu 1 and for mu 2 is uh, equal to arc scene of the angle between 1 divided by mu or Mach number at region 2 one thing that we need to remember uh, in an oblique shock waves, we only need to consider the normal components of the Mach number and velocity, right? So here, beside, we need to deal with, also need to deal with the change in theta also. So that's a, one of the key that we will proceed in the course. Uh, thermodynamically, this process is isentropic. Therefore, the enthalpy, the entropy remain constant from region 1 to region 2. So the entropy remain constant. So that means that these properties that with total, uh, the total properties, let's say the total temperature at region 1 is equal to the total temperature at region 2. And the same terms also apply for the pressure density and so on 
that's uh, due to the isentropic behavior of the phenomenon. So if we look back through the history, the first uh, or the first two uh, scientists who performed this uh, research was the was uh, were Ludwig Prantl and his students Theodore Mayer. So this uh, was part of Theodore Mayer dissertations back then. So it was during 1907 and 1908. And therefore, this uh, theory being famous as the Prandtl Mayer expansion wave. In more detail, so that you do not get confused with the terms of expansion fan and expansion wave, so let's say that this entire shock wave. called as the frontal expansion wave or expansion fan so we can see them as a sequence a continuous sequence of a infinitesimal Mach expansion wave so we have one up to several numbers of expansion waves or Mach waves in a sequence with the front Mach angle and rear end Mach angle. So the mu or the Mach angle at the downstream is smaller than the Mach angle at upstream region. And the step between one and the other Mach angle, between this one and this one, is uh, relatively small that therefore it can be categorized as infinitesimal Mach expansion waves and on the other hand so the Prandtl mayer functions or we can also call it a Prandtl mayer angle describes the angle through which a flow turns isentropically as I mentioned earlier in the previous slide so there are no change in entropy throughout the expansion fan with uh, one condition that the upstream region the Mach number has to be minimum of one or flow has to be sonic flow and in comparison to that of an oblique shock wave for example in an oblique shock wave where we have a concave angle instead of a convex angle like this the Mach number is decreasing but in this one we have a higher Mach number downstream and since the pressure uh, the process is not isentropic for the oblique shock normal oblique shock we have an increase in pressure and we have a loss in total pressure and therefore we have P02 is smaller than P01 that's for the oblique shock wave but in an expansion wave as we remember that the process is isentropic we have the Mach number increase across the shock and the static pressure decrease However, the total pressure remain constant. So therefore, we have the P2 is smaller than P1 at this region due to the static pressure decreasing across the shock. To see uh, the phenomenon in a clearer image, assume that we have one Mach wave in a set of Mach waves in an expansion fan so this is one single wave in an expansion fan and we need to see the change in this infinitesimal or small change in deflection angle and we need to see the effect of one wave to the change in velocity and we know that this uh, change in the angle deflection angle small deflection angle in one wave in a series of waves is a functions of the incoming velocity 
which also part of the Mach number. Therefore, it's a function of the square of Mach number to the power of 2 minus 1 multiplied by change in velocity across the wave divided by V. So, we know that the velocity after facing, passing the first Mach wave become V plus dV or change in velocity occurs after the flow passing the wave and this equation relates the change in velocity to the deflection angle across the first wave of a set of uh, expansion fan. So to calculate the expansion fan, we can use the parental mayor functions, which we will uh, discuss after this slide. So this function is derived from the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy, so these three set, three set of equations, in every small d theta or small angle, small deflections angle change across this expansion fan. After combining and deriving the conservations of mass, energy, and momentum equations, we have the Prandtl-Meyer functions, or we also call it as the Prandtl-Meyer angle. So it's a function of the Mach number, and it's a root of the gamma or the ratio of specific gas. It's a Cp per Cv plus one and gamma minus one arc tangent of gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 multiplied by Mach number to the power of 2 minus 1 and also multiplied by the minus arc tangent of root of Mach to the power of 2 minus 1 and from this rewriting these equations we can get that the deflection angle of the entire expansion fan is equal to the Mach angle or sorry, the frontal angle, frontal mayor angle at region 2 and frontal mayor angle at region 1. So we have velocity upward of the region or region 1 upward of the shock wave, the forward Mach line and the rearward Mach lines and we also have sets of, ang set of expansion Mach here. So we just take the front and the rear one, the very front and the very end of the Mach angle. And from this, we to perform the an analysis of this uh, Prandtl Meyer expansion wave, we normally will be given the Mach angle one, which from it we can get the frontal mayor angle from appendix C in the Anderson book so we can see if the Mach angle 1 is let's say 1.2 and then we can see the Mach angle or, or the frontal mayor angle from the appendix C and then from that we can calculate the frontal mayor angle at region 2 using the deflection angle that being given by the problem and then using the frontal mirror angle from previous calculations and then these two steps we can get the frontal mirror angle at region 2 from these equations after that since we know the frontal mirror angle at region 2 we can get the Mach number of region 2 again by seeing the table in appendix C then we can get the Mach number at region 2. Since we know that the expansion wave is isentropic, then we know that the total pressure and temp total temperature are constant through the wave, and then we can use this information to calculate the temperature, the static temperature at region 2, and the static pressure at region 2 also by using these equations. Now let's try to analyze a problem in an expansion shock wave or expansion frontal mayor uh, functions. 
and this is a problem we have at a upstream region of flow coming in with a Mach number of 1.5 and a pressure at 1 atm so this is a sea level conditions and temperature of 288 Kelvin and flow is expanded around a sharp corner through a deflection angle of 15 degrees so theta is 15 degrees to the uh, flow directions and then we are being asked to calculate the Mach number at region 2, pressure at region 2, temperature at region 2, the total pressure and total temperature at region 2, and the angles that the forward and reward, rearward Mach lines make with respect to the upstream flow direction. So we need to find alpha 1 and a uh, new 1 and new 2. So this is how we solve the problem. First and foremost, we know that we are being given an information that the Mach number at region 1 is 1.5, pressure equal to 1 atm, temperature equal to 288 Kelvin. So from this information, we can get the Prandtl-Meyer angle so at Mach number 1.5, we can see it from Appendix C in this table that the frontal mayor angle at Region 1 is 11.91 degrees. And we can also calculate the frontal mayor angle at Region 2 to be as a function of frontal mayor at Region 1 plus deflection angle. So it's 11. 0.91 plus 15 we get 26.91 degrees and then from this information from the same table we get that at this certain frontal mayor angle we get Mach number around 2.0 so we, we need to do some rounding to the nearest value in the tables so and then we see also another table in appendix A with Mach number 1.5 we know that the total to static pressure ratio is at region 1 is 3.6 temperature total temperature to static ratio is 1.45 and also we can do the same for the second region also we know that in an expansion wave the flow is isentropic therefore the Temperature, total temperature and total pressure is constant throughout the flow. Then we can use the information that we have to calculate the static pressure and total pressure. Since we don't have the information of the total pressure and temperature at region 1, we still need to calculate this uh, for region 2. So first, let's begin with the total pressure. We so. We are using actually the chain rule since this one is cancelled by this one and this one is cancelled by this one and this one is cancelled by this one. So we need to arrange them like this since we have this information in table available for us. So then we can get that the static pressure after the shock wave or after the expansion wave is 0 0.469 atm. And the temperature also by using the chain rules we get the temperature to be 232 Kelvin. we see that the static pressure and temperature are decreasing across the shock and then we can use the information also to calculate the total pressure and total temperature at region 2 and then to get the Mach angle 1, we get that the angle is 41.81 for the forward Mach line and we also get the rearward Mach line angle to be 15 degrees. So to get this mu1 
you need to remember that at the beginning that this mark angle at the forward mark is equal to the arc sin of 1 per mark at region 1 so therefore we get this one and the same also apply for region 2 actually but here they uh, use the information from subtracting the mu2 subtract by the deflections angle of region 2 or we can go directly by using this information for using these uh, equations actually.